Welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And we are joined this week, as in all weeks, with um, Jennifer Brooks, book correspondent, and Stacy Kennedy, cultural correspondent. Thank you. Our guest this week is John Marble, advisor to expandability and social media specialist. But before we begin, gotta ask Will, what's with your shirt this week? Funny you, funny you should ask that. This week's shirt is is my best buddy's friendship walk. It. I got this from from the friendship walk itself. Every year, Best Buddies has 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 this walk where we gather as we gather as many members as possible and walk around Golden Gate Park. Excellent. How was this year's friendship walk, Will? I it was. I, I'd say it was a hit. Excellent. Excellent. And Will, I know that you like t-shirts, so I moved to San Francisco after working in the federal government in Washington, D.C., so I brought you a t-shirt from NASA, which is one of the government organizations that I worked with, and probably the coolest one, so I wanted to give that to you. Um, maybe you can wear it in the future. Really good. You'll certainly have cred in the community now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But before any uh, more humor, um, let's begin. Uh, Will, would you like to take it from there? Gladly. First, tell us about your background in, in the autism commu community. Sure. Well, uh, like all autistic people, I was born autistic, but I'm uh, a little bit older than you and of the age where a lot of autistic people my age uh, weren't diagnosed as children. Uh, so I actually went through the diagnostic process as an adult, uh, began the process about uh, five years ago, thinking that I had hearing problems and uh, mobility problems, not realizing that it was uh, related to sensory issues, um, and then was diagnosed about three years ago. And since then, I've become a, a self-advocate and involved uh, in groups like the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, and then moved to San Francisco to help work on uh, the issue of autistic underemployment. Uh, so now I advise Expandability in their Autism Advantage program. We, we, we are working to train and uh, place and support autistic people, both in the IT community and in other businesses as well. Excellent. I understand, uh, Jennifer, you're involved in the Expandability program too. Yes, I am. Jennifer is uh, in our data, sci uh, data science, data, data analytics program, um, and is a really good presenter of data, I think a natural. Uh, so I know she just graduated with a master's degree, right, in statistics? Yes, Very I did. Good. Um, and uh, so she's putting that to use by learning how to uh, translate data to people like me who don't necessarily understand it readily. So I, I really enjoy her presentations. Really good. Thank you, John. Oh, you're welcome. Tell us about your tell us about your background in social media. Sure. Uh, the older I get, um, the less connected to social media I feel. Uh, but I used to do a lot of political communications and communications for nonprofit groups, and a natural part of that is using social media because it used to be that the only way that you could communicate with the public is through the press, either on television or in a newspaper. But now people talk to each other online. Uh, so I had to learn about you know, how to effectively use social media and also how social media can be a benefit to people. Tell us, tell us, tell us about your current projects in social media. Sure. Um, my current project stems from my work with the Expandability Autism Advantage program. And part of the things that we're trying to do is not just do a training program, but to, do, but to use this program as a way to help build autistic culture, mm -hmm. uh, services for autistic adults, and opportunities. So my biggest social media project right now is simply mapping out all the social media in the autism space. Um, Yikes. Which, <laughs> I, I could use some help because it's a lot. You think that it's a little, um, I, I've written down a bunch of things to share, but there's not even enough time on this program, which is a great thing. So the more that we can understand what's out there, the better connected we can be. Yes. Oh, 
can you tell us about uh, some of the, first of all, uh, the sites of that are specifically for the autistic community? Sure. I think that one that a lot of people in California are most familiar with is Wrong Planet, which is one of the oldest social networking mm -hmm. sites for autistic people. It has... <laughs> I can't remember the numbers, but I looked at the numbers recently, and there are a lot of people using uh, Wrong Planet, um, and I'll provide links mm -hmm. to all these as well. Um, besides Wrong Planet, there's been some things that have um, popped up uh, within the last few years that I find a real big benefit. One is the Thinking Person's Guide to Autism, mm -hmm. which is also based here in the Bay Area, and that brings together autistic voices, parents and family members and friends uh, of autistic people and people working in the autism space. That's been a really big help to me. Uh, another one is uh, NOS Magazine, NOS, NOS Magazine, which is a new uh, online magazine about autistic and neurodiverse culture. So they feature not only writings uh, about autism, but they feature autistic people who do book reviews or mm -hmm. movie reviews. Uh, and that's been a, a huge benefit to me. I also contribute to that. Um, and thinking uh, Black Autist is a... Um, a uh, website that fr that blogs from the black autistic perspective. Mm -hmm. I find that very helpful. Um, autistic Hoya is another website run by an advocate in Washington, D.C. that I think is very informative to read. Um, and then you have things like uh, Deciphering Morgan, which is a woman blogging about her autism experience. Real Social Skills is an interesting website to read. Uh, with a round smooth stone is a uh, nonverbal autistic author who shares their work. Mm -hmm. um, and those are just some examples. Um, we're going to provide a, a link on expandability.org that you made us think about a lot of these things. <laughs> uh, and so as I was scribbling them down, I thought, well, I should put this up online. Uh, so we've been undertaking the project the last uh, two days, and we'll provide the link for you to share on air. Excellent. Do you differentiate between uh, sites which are specifically social media for people on the spectrum and sites which may be of uh, autistic organizations such as Ascend? It's kind of all meshed together, which is, that's the point of social media is making those connections. I think the natural history of websites is that they were static websites, mm -hmm. but now each of those websites I mentioned mm -hmm. either has a Twitter component or a YouTube component or a Facebook component. Uh, people don't just digest uh, information in one place. Uh, Ascend has a television show. They also have a uh, several live meetings a month that you can attend. Uh, they have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. They have a Twitter handle. Uh, so it's kind of our social media flowers in a whole bunch of different forms. So John, uh, how does social media actually benefit our community? I think it benefits us in a lot of ways. Uh, there's a stereotype a lot of times that autistic people aren't good at networking, and we certainly have challenges sometimes. Mm -hmm. Online networking is a way that I've found that autistic people can be really good at. Sometimes we need models about how to first engage it. Um, my friends kind of laughed when I first moved to San Francisco because I had been here a lot for work, and had gone to meetings at social media companies like LinkedIn, uh, had great meetings there. But when I moved here, I actually needed a model of how to use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, I work well with models. So I actually came to Ascend and the Ascend Jog Club, and they showed me how to use LinkedIn. In fact, later on, we took a group of, of people with Ascend to LinkedIn. Uh, so starting with people that you know that are on social media, if you're not on social media yourself, says models, they can show you how they best use it. Um, first, it's a great way to connect with other people. Um, second, it's a great way to uh, gain information. Uh, third, it's a wonderful way to share your voice. I have um, several nonverbal friends um, who either communicate through communications devices or through iPads. And the internet and social media has just been such an open book for them that allows them to connect with the world mm -hmm. and to use their voice. Um, you can use it to find job opportunities. You can find, use it to find support services. You can use it to realize that, oh, something that I do is shared by other autistic people. I thought I just did that myself. Um, so the more that you can connect with people, whether in person mm -hmm. or online, 
um, the more opportunities that you have. Excellent. And al along those lines, you have given us and are in the process of giving us a, a very extensive list of, of social media <laughs> that would be very useful to our community. Where should somebody start? It's like drinking from a fire hose. I know, I understand. And the more I write things down, the, the, the bigger that fire hose seems to be. Uh, we'll certainly, we'll put up a list on expandability.org um, of all these types of people. Uh, so start with the platforms that you currently use, if you use them. Um, I think on Facebook, there's several groups um, for autistic services. There's mm -hmm. also several groups just for people on the spectrum. And it's a safe space that people on the spectrum can use to talk with each other. Uh, there's a group called Autistico. There's a group called Autistex with an X on the end. Mm -hmm. And these are spaces that people can share. I'm going through this issue. Um, how do other people go through this mm -hmm. as well? I found it so helpful. Uh, we're probably all on some form on YouTube. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can use it just by watching funny things. Um, there's a Speechless by Carly Fleischman, um, and Carly is a nonverbal autistic woman who interviews some of her favorite celebrities, and it's quite hilarious. Um, other funny ones are uh, Autistic Adam and Autistic Genius, which are Two, both are two young men in the UK. Uh, so autistic Genius shares a little bit more about his challenges on the autism spectrum, but also does it in a funny way. Uh, autistic Adam is just usually funny things. If you're a gamer on YouTube, there's Autistic Gamer uh, and Matthew the Autism Guy. They do a great job. Uh, if you have specialized interests and want to see that reflected in other people, you can find YouTube mm -hmm. videos for that. Uh, Frankie McDonald is a young man in Nova Scotia who gives weather reports around the world. That's his specialized autistic interest. Um, Ask an Autistic on YouTube is a wonderful resource just to talk about autistic traits. Um, whether it's how you hear or experience the world, it's wonderful to use YouTube that way to see yourself reflected. Um, and then you can join in conversations on Twitter. Um, people either don't use Twitter or they really seem to love Twitter. Um, I went through a phase of not using Twitter, hating Twitter, and now loving Twitter. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can follow Ascend on Twitter. Uh, you can follow, you know, all sorts of interesting people. Eric Garcia is on Twitter. He's an autistic reporter who reports on Washington, D.C. for mm -hmm. Roll Call. Uh, Karina Becker is with the Autistic Women's Network, which that's a tremendous resource uh, for women on the spectrum. Um, and then there's a, a lot of uh, great people to follow. Uh, not specifically autistic, but one of my favorite people is Rebecca Coakley. She's on Twitter. Um, she's a disability advocate. She's a little person. She also worked in amazing jobs in the White House, which is how I met her. Mm -hmm. um, she's also a Prince fan. I love Prince. Mm -hmm. um, she's also an enthusiastic Game of Thrones fan. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm sorry to all my friends who are listening, because as soon as I get home, they'll yell at me. Um, no. But she... I don't either. She tweets wonderfully. <laughs> okay, good. I'm not the only one. But she tweets wonderfully about yeah. Game of Thrones, and that yeah. has nothing to do with her disability. But those are the types of connections. Yep. It's like you might connect with somebody for, for one person. Mm -hmm. um, I might connect online with Will because you're a member of Ascend, and maybe we talk about Ascend, but then maybe I discover that you have another interest that I have. And that's the wonderful thing about social media is mm -hmm. learning things about each other. Um, the more I get to know Jennifer, the more I realize that we're a lot alike, um, whether Jennifer uh, wants to admit that or not. But that's that's the wonderful thing about uh, connecting with people. Yeah. Yeah. I um, you know, s since we're speaking about this, I'm sure s most from the beginning feel this kind of pressure, like oh, everyone's watching this, but not me, you know. But at the same time, it's like it's like, gosh, I you know. Like you said, like you really might over exaggerate saying, Why aren't you watching this? It's like, well, you know, I'm just not <laughs> interested in it. But d d have you found those that, you know, have their differences and they're okay with your differences? And yeah, and they you've spoken of your interest as well. And 
and then you feel Absolutely. more comfortable and feel less pressured and so on. Because I Absolutely. I, I've been through that on and off in my life, for sure. I mean, yeah. I think that like the easiest thing is if you're sitting in a room of people with six other people and uh -huh. they start talking about Game of Thrones and yeah. you haven't seen Game of Thrones, you can yeah. feel a little left out, right? Um, but if you're online and people are talking about Game of Thrones, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can find people talking about other things. Right. So whatever... Like, I have a lot of weird, you know, uh, self-interest. I love geography. Mm -hmm. Like, who, like, uh, you lit up, like, you like this geography. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. But, but we may, we may have not had that. When would that usually have come up besides here in conversation? But online, online, I can, you know, geography oh, now is a wonderful YouTube channel that has nothing to do with autism, but it has everything to do with geography. Mm -hmm. Like, you can find anything online for any type of interest you have so we probably had th that might have been a happy accident but we yeah. probably mm -hmm. would have had an easier time uh keith and i connecting online over geography yeah uh, which i'm so excited that somebody here loves geography oh, than we would in person so mm -hmm. that's the type of benefit yeah. i believe so in happy accidents for sure uh, yeah. and, and the wonderful thing about social media is yeah. that they um, allow the opportunity for more and more happy accidents. That's basically the, the, the power behind it. Yes. Jennifer, do you have a question? Yes, John. You've mentioned some of the positive benefits that social media has had for those of us within the autism community. Do you think it's also had some positive effect among the neurotypical population, helping them understand us better, possibly reducing prejudice? Absolutely. I have found that the more open that I am about being autistic mm -hmm. on social media, uh, the more people understand how I experience life. And also the more people realize that maybe they need to go through the diagnostic process themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I use hashtags like actually autistic on uh, Twitter and on Instagram, um, even if it's something not to do with autism, just to show that autistic people do everything that other people do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that, uh, sorry, autistics in academia, it might be something that's good for you because that's a hashtag that people in academia use who are working and who are also autistic. And that's a way to inform people that there's autistic people working everywhere. So the more I share on social media, the more my friends uh, understand me and understand the autistic experience. I was wondering, what, what is Jazz Hands for Autism? What is, what is that? Oh, I actually, that's a new website. That, not a new website, but a website that I recently found. Uh -huh. It's actually a wonderful organization that's based in Los Angeles that helps uh, train and place autistic musicians. I so I know I've been to a previous Ascend meetings uh, where there's been uh, musicians looking for work. They're an organization mm -hmm. that helps autistic people who are musicians find work. Um, and so they have some uh, great uh, social media accounts as well. Mm, okay, that's good to know. And my, and my question is, do you keep track on everyone on, on your account? Uh, not all the time because there's so many. Um, however, there's other people who absolutely keep track of everybody that they come in contact with. Um, but I follow every conversation that somebody uh, starts every comment that somebody makes, every like, um, I pay attention to that and it helps me understand their voice better. Another question I had was, are there negative things to social media? Yes, there's negative things to everything. Yeah. Um, you should think of social media as a platform mm -hmm. and you can use it for wonderful things. Mm -hmm. uh, people can also abuse it and use it for negative things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, oh, no I... Um... Well, actually, I guess to add to that, um, how would you suggest, how, I mean, how would one on the spectrum or even let alone off the spectrum too would handle that? I mean, because they might read things that are negative and how would they, how would they just deal with that and just go yeah. on? Or, so <laughs> two things that yeah. I think are golden rule. Mm -hmm. First, uh, people are more likely to say negative things in mm -hmm. comments and they are positive because that's human nature. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not, it's harder for you to leave a Yelp review that says you love something, um, or even if you like something, mm -hmm. but if you really don't like something, you're probably going to post a Yelp review. Mm -hmm. So you have to remember that, you know, it kind of, a lot of times it will skew negative, but that's not yeah. the reality, right? Right. Um, and the second thing is, is that there's other people who think like you. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So if you ever feel bullied online, uh, there's resources, but there's also other people online who will, uh, defend, who, who you, will defend you and you. work with you. That's great, yeah. yeah. Thank you. My final question is something which is going to make your job of categorizing <laughs> all the social media things related to <laughs> autism a bit harder, hopefully. So we've discussed a lot about uh, members of our community participating in using social media. Do you have any suggestions or resources how our people can get involved in actually creating yep. on social media? Say if someone sends up, wants to set up a blog or their own website. How would they do that? So we we have resources on expandability.org that shows you a lot of the social media, and we'll continue to build mm -hmm. on that. And if you uh, connect with us on social media, um, we'll add to that. Um, that is a very good suggestion that I think that's probably our next step, that we'll welcome people on social media to help mm -hmm. us do that. Um, when I signed up for LinkedIn, I needed a send to show me how to create a LinkedIn mm -hmm. account. Um, other people might need to be shown models about how to do a Twitter account. Uh, so I think that would be a great project to work with Ascent and uh, work very quickly on. So thank you for adding to my work. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good thing. All part of the job, but sir. It, I mean, that's what, that's what you should be doing is sharing that information mm -hmm. so I can see that's a need that somebody has. And maybe I realize that, oh, yeah, that was a need that I had as well. Um, so I think that's the great thing about social media. Well, excellent. Well, thank you again. Uh, we really appreciate thank the you. work you and Expandability are doing, and we look forward to working with you on your various projects. And I look forward to so many more shows of this show, which I tremendously love. Oh, thank thank you. you. And now we'll hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Today, uh, some of the things I'd like to share. The first thing is um, now on Saturdays weekly, there's this thing called Dance for All Inclusive exercise class from 1 to 2 p.m. at the El Camino Real YMCA in Mountain View. And what it does, it's, it offers safe and accepting environments where differences are, are accepted without judgment. And special need participants can exercise side by side. Um, they play popular music. There's dances choreographed um, as long, well, with Pilates-based exercises. And and everybody is welcome. And for more information, you go to ymcasv.org. Tuesday, July 25th, um, there's the Sensory Friendly Film um, event. And they are showing War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, and to look for the timing, you have to fi find out um, at amctheaters.com, see participating theaters, because they vary. Um, and what's nice about this one is because Autism Society, um, they, they will be part of it where they'll turn on the lights or turn lights up and turn the sound down so you can get up, dance, walk, shout, or sing. So, um, and it's every second and fourth Saturday, um, the friendly film, sensory friendly films. Uh, the same day, there's another film going on, um, a documentary called Dina. Uh, that will be playing at the Castro Theater at 6.10 p.m. Um, again, this is on July 25th. And it is a documentary about two adults with developmental differences whose desires are love, acceptance, companionship, and intimacy. And it unfolds with moments of that are at times humorous and profoundly sad, but always delightfully human. And there's a website to go to that is SFJFF f.org slash film um, uh, it's not underscore or anything but it's just a regular slash guide slash Dinah Saturday July 29th is an art is art places a new faces show and reception at 1 to 4 p.m. in Hayward um, Harambi Community Services is collaborating um, an uh, exhibition of artistic works from adults and youths with and without disabilities. And there will be featured um, group murals and individual paintings that will be shared. And to RSVP, uh, go to events at H-A-R-A-M-B-E-E, -E, Harambe .org. And, um, and one last thing to share. Um, 
it's more of a meeting, but uh, there's the Autastics meeting the same day in Daly City at the Seton Medical Center. You come and talk about your life, or you could come and just listen to other people's lives and whatever you want. And that is my correspondent for today. Thank you. And now, Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent, will discuss her book of the week. Thank you, Keith. Before I begin, I'd like to give a special shout out to the volunteers in Marin County who are helping the Turtle Island Restoration Network restore salmon habitat as we are taping this. In their honor, I'm wearing my Turtle Island bracelet and my Turtle Island necklace. Nice. Nice. Today's book is called Asperger's on the Job by Rudy Simone, the famous female author on the spectrum. It has a foreword by an even more famous female author on the spectrum, Dr. Temple Grandin. One of the things I love about this book is it's not an academic treatise. It can be read by anyone and it should be read by everyone, both employers and employees and also family members of those on the spectrum who are concerned. It's full of practical advice for both employers and employees, and also quotes from people who have been through the struggle. Let me just give you a random sample. This is from the chapter that discusses visual overstimulation and other sensory issues, a very common experience for those of us on the spectrum. So here we have two quotes. Oh, here they are discussing Fresh air is another common workplace wish. Honestly, I don't understand how neurotypicals can survive without it. <laughs> Tom, 24, who has an MS in aeronautical engineering, so he's a really smart guy, says, I don't eat during the day, so I could take 10-minute breaks throughout the day instead of one long lunch. That way I can clear my head and get some much-needed fresh air. And... Fumiro, a male in his 20s who lives in Japan, says, I would like windows, which I am allowed to open anytime I want. I hate air conditioning. I need fresh air once in a while. So, I have some advice for people like Tom and like Fumiro. One is, ask for a spot by a window and open some blinds. At the end of the list, they say, how you ask for something is often more of a factor in whether or not you get it than why. Increase your chance of being heard by being tactful. Ask for what you need in a positive way, or your requests will be seen as complaints rather than as something rational and logical. And I'm sure the neurotypicals listening to this would think, yes, duh, everybody knows that. We've all known that since the time we were born. But please consider that for somebody on the autism spectrum, it may not be that obvious. It's something that they may genuinely not consider until somebody points it out to them directly. Absolutely. <laughs> what did you most enjoy about this book? Well, what I most enjoyed about it was, first of all, reading the quotes from other people who have had similar experiences to mine, and also the tips for the employees. Honestly, I had wish I had known about those things multiple jobs ago. It may have been made the experience a little more positive, even if it didn't change the outcome. Excellent. Well, thank you. And, You're welcome. And we look forward to your next review. Thank you. Well, folks, this is our program for the week. And for our viewers, we will be putting a listing of the extensive list of websites which uh, John gave us on our site. So for this week, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm, I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm John Marble. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. Until next time, uh, this is Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.